our lives. It all started with Chris phoning me and telling me the story of Batman Begins. And of course I wanted to do a Batman movie, but I started to have doubts really early on about being able to split my personality into the Dark Knight and the elegant Bruce Wayne. So Chris suggested I phone my friend James Hewton Howard, that truly elegant man, that truly elegant composer, and this truly great friend. And he came along to London with us, and we did this movie with this orchestra behind us. And it was enough of a success that you know, the studio asked us to do another one, but Chris will not never do anything unless he has an idea. But one day he came to my studio and he started to talk to me about a character that he was thinking about, a character full of rage, a character driven by anarchy, a character that curiously is the only character in the whole movie that tells the truth. He started to talk to me about the Joker, and the more he started to talk about it, the more I realized that this was a pretty tough part, and I said to him, well, who's gonna play this part? And he said, oh, there's this young actor called Heath Ledger. And he... He threw himself into this role with commitment, with authenticity, and he got the punk thing, he got all that. And the more, every scene that we saw, every daily that came in, I mean, he was like, you know, he was burning our eyes from the screen with the intensity of his performance. And just, just before we finished the movie, but just before I finished the score, we got this phone call saying that our Heath had died. And my first reaction was, oh no, I needed to pull back all those punk elements, all those harsh elements. And then I suddenly realized that the only way I could show respect to the man and show respect for this incredible performance was to keep the busted razor blades across the strings in there, to keep the edge, to keep the punk stuff, to keep the anarchy. And a while later, Chris came to me and he said, come on, we'll do it, we'll make it a trilogy. And we found our sense of adventure again, and we did The Dark Knight Rises. And we finished it and went to New York for an amazing premiere and got onto a plane to come here to London and we flew all night. And I remember getting to my flat really early in the morning, it must have been like seven o'clock in the morning, and the phone was ringing. There was a journalist asking me what my reaction was the reaction to the tragedy that happened in a small town where they were screening our movie in a small town in Colorado I had never heard of called Aurora. And none of us had heard of the shooting because we were on the plane all night. And I said the first word and the only word that came into my head, I said devastated. And all day I was thinking about the victims and all day I was thinking about the loved ones they left behind. And all day I knew that the word devastated just wasn't able to describe what I was feeling. So I phoned the choir, my friends in the choir, and I said, can we do a piece that is wordless, but it should feel like we're stretching our arms out across the Atlantic and wrapping our arms around the loved ones that are left behind. And you know something? The world hasn't gotten any better. We know that. You know, I stand here and I look at you, and Paris and London and Manchester, but here on the stage, look at us. We're musicians from all continents, from all different directions, from all different cultures. And you know something? We're here tonight to play for you, to play for you, London, from our hearts, and to put our arms around you. And we're here to play for you this piece, this piece that I was hoping I'd never have to play again, this piece called Aurora.